In the early 1960, Edward Lawrence, a professor at MIT, was working on developing a system to simplify the convection rules in upper atmosphere for long-range weather predictions. A long range means five plus days, not that long really. And, uh, but however, the weather was complicated uh, and is complicated. So we need a theoretical simplification. In 1963, he drived a three-dimensional system in an effort to model long-range prediction for the weather. But while he was using the system, he ran heading into a problem, sensitivity to initial conditions. And in the process, he sketched the outline of one of the first recognized chaotic attractors. He came to the conclusion that model equations are inaccurate in the representations of some aspects of the weather, or the model may be accurate, but there is some anomalous property of the equations that makes our prediction difficult. The Lorentz systems describes the motion of a fluid between two layers at different temperature. Specifically, the fluid is heated uniformly from the below and cooled uniformly from above. By rising the temperature difference between the two surfaces, we observe initially a linear temperature gradients and then uh, the formation of frehley bernard convection cells. After convection, turbulence regime is also observed. The Lorentz attractors defines a three-dimensional trajectory by the differential equations, three differential equations, and three parameters. When calculating this model, Lorentz encountered a strange phenomenon. After entering slightly different input values, for two successive attempts, he obtained completely different outputs. This effect was later named a butterfly effect. The butterfly effect is the propensity of a system to be sensitive to initial conditions. Such a system over time become unpredictable. This idea gave a rise to the notation of a butterfly flapping its wings in one area of the world, causing a tornado or such a um, weather events to occur in another remote area of the world. These two graphs show time dependence of function x of t and z of t in the Lorentz attractors for the recommended parameters values. The blue curves are related to initial conditions x and y uh, equal 1 and uh, z equals 10, and red curves are related to initial conditions x and y are still 1, but we increase z by 0.01. Very slight change of initial condition results in a large change in the solution of the function, as you can see here. So uh, let's look at the fixed points of the system. The system have uh, three fixed points. S1, S2, and S3. Now if we calculate the Jacobian of the system at each of these three uh, fixed points and for uh, calculate them for the uh, recommended parameters value, then we can see all of the three fixed points are unstable because they all include an eigenvalue with positive real part. A chaotic system can be roughly defined by its sensitivity to initial conditions. Very small differences in the initial conditions of the system result in large differences in behavior. A chaos provides a balance between flexibility and stability, adaptiveness and dependability. Chaotic systems do not usually go out of control, but stay within uh, bounded operating conditions. It lives on the edge between order and randomness. 
How do you think algorithmic complexity can be used to analyze this type of system? What if you don't have equations describing the system and you only observe the output of the system close to its attractors? As you saw, dynamical system can have different types of attractors. If the system evolves towards a single state and remains there, we call it fixed point. An example is damp pendulum or a ball at the bottom of bowel. It will be periodic attractors when the system evolves towards a limit cycle. An example is undamp pendulum or a planet orbiting around the sun. If the system is very sensitive to initial conditions and we are not able to simply predict its behavior, we call it chaotic attractor. An example is uh, the Lorentz attractor. But there is another type of attractors which we have not talked about it yet, a strange attractor. The system has a strange attractor if it's also very sensitive to initial conditions and we are not able to simply predict its behavior. But in this case, the system has the same properties like fractals. In another words, the strange attractor represents a fractal. An example is Mandelbrot set. For those of you who are wondering what is fractal, a fractal is a non-regular geometric shape that has the same degree of non-regularity on all scales. Fractals can be thought of as um, never-ending patterns. Uh, it has a Hausdorff dimension of its border higher than its topological dimension of the border. Uh, an example is a contour set where the original line is divided into three parts and the middle part is erased. The same procedure is applied to newly created lines. If you are repeating the same procedure to infinity, we obtain an infinite number of points with topological dimension zero. The set contains uh, two copies of itself reduced to one over t of the original dimension. So the Hausdorff dimension is log two over log three, which is greater than zero. So up to now, we learn a dynamical system lives in phase space and develop in time following its dynamical law. We saw examples of continuous dynamical system and uh, we learn how to analyze them. In the next two lectures, we will do the same for discrete dynamical systems.